We're here from GrillParts.com and today we're rebuilding a Weber Genesis Silver Gas Grill. Alright, let's dive in and remember always kill your fuel supply before you start on your gas grill project. The warming rack, cooking grates, and flavorizer bars all lift right out of the grill body. You can see where the heat and grease have started to uh, destroy these flavorizer bars. Be careful when you're handling these. I'm not sure how long it's been since you've had a Tecna shot, but they're still not fun. Once you've pulled that stuff off, you'll expose the burners. Pulling these out is easy too, but you actually have to break out a screwdriver. Uh, there are two screws that attach the cover to the control valve and frame. Remove those, pull the uh, gas control knobs off, and the cover will lift right out of there. There should be two hooks that support the weight of the gas manifold that are attached to the frame, or at least dangling there. Disconnect those, then remove the bolts that attach the manifold to the body. Once those are out, the manifold and valves should lift right out uh, with the attached propane hose. It's important to remember that when shopping for replacement parts, a significant portion of the burner is outside of the firebox. This burner is actually 27 inches long, but only 23 inches or so are actually inside the grill. There are two screws that hold the burners in place at the tab then, uh, but they shouldn't be tightened down, they're just guides. You shouldn't have to loosen those to get the burner out. You just slide the tubes off the screws and gently uh, separate the assembly and uh, it'll slide right out. The igniter box might be a bit tricky to remove. It's just held in by a steel tab, but it may take a bit of wiggling around if you're plastered with grease on the inside. Once that box is free, pull the igniter wire off the uh, bottom of the push button and pull the entire assembly through the firebox. You can see that this collector box is pretty torn up from grease and heat. Uh, there's only so long that even the best stainless can hold up on the inside of your grill. This generation of grills will either have a snap-in or threaded igniter. Be sure you take a look at yours before you shop for parts. This one is a snap-in that just pops right out. All right, now we're gonna move on to the grill. If you're replacing your clean-out tray, uh, grab a scraper and get the bulk of the grime out of the inside of the firebox before you take this out. It'll save you some uh, serious cleanup. The only two screws that connect the clean-out tray on this model, uh, just slide the tray and uh, grease catcher assembly out and uh, back the screws out, it'll come right off. Now's when you break out the hose and scrub brush and uh, clean up everything that you want shiny. It won't look new, but remember the cleaner the inside of the body is, the better it's going to radiate heat and that is a good thing. Alright, time to start putting this thing back together. We'll start with the tray and the rails. The rail looks like it needs three screws per side, but they're really just tabs at each end to keep the rail stable and you only need one screw in the middle. But be careful not to over tighten these. The cast aluminum firebox is sturdy, but it can strip out pretty easily. The grease catch pan and bracket come as an assembly. Ours is pretty funky, so we're actually happy to have a fresh one here. Um, all you do is snap the bracket into the bottom of the uh, clean out tray and then slide the pan into place. Just a side note, it's worth coughing up the six bucks for the disposable liners for this. A pack of 10 is going to set you back six bucks for about two years of heavy use, and they make cleanup pretty easy. This is a two burner model, but if you have a Silver C, you probably have three. It basically works the same. Burner tubes will have a large hole at the tab den where the crossover burner plugs in. You want to make sure that you have those two holes facing each other when you slide the tubes into the grill. Slide the crossover burner into the holes and secure the burners under the screws in the grill body. And again, don't tighten those, they're just a guide. Alright, now grab the igniter and feed the leads through the holes. Uh, the ceramic post goes through the larger upper hole and the flexible lead will go through the smaller lower hole. Obviously the open side of the gas collector box should face the burner. Uh, once that's through, bend the lower flexible lead to about a 45 degree angle and bend the upper tab flat up against the grill body. Attach the leads to the igniter and pop it right back into place. Set the gas manifold back in place and uh, attach the hangers and bolt it back to the grill body. Now just drop the flavorizer bars back into the grill body. We went with porcelain coated steel, uh, but for an extra 20 bucks you can get the stainless bars. We'll give you an extra season or two. Again, we love the heavy cast iron cooking grates for this grill. They take longer to heat up, but they sear like a beast and hold heat longer and they're basically indestructible. The rocker switch for the igniter pops right out and is a snap to replace. From there, you just drop the panel into place, put the screws back in, and slide on your new gas control knobs. We also dropped in a replacement thermometer and a shiny new warming rack. We don't use it all the time, but it's great to have when you need it. That's it, you're set to grill.